Hello everyone. Um, I want to do a unboxing video today on something called the Temp Stick, which is a Wi-Fi temperature and humidity sensor for the RV. Why would I need this? Well, imagine that you have pets and you want to go out for a couple of hours and leave your pet in the RV. Maybe go shopping or do something that you can't bring your pet along. Um, and it's a hot summer day and you're running your air conditioning, you're at your campground, uh, but as you um, are away, maybe the power fails, or if it's winter time, maybe you run out of propane, or maybe your circuit breaker pops in your air conditioner. For some reason, something goes wrong, uh, and your RV temperature starts to climb, and you want to be able to know that your pets are safe and uh, are not getting any kind of extreme temperatures. So this device, which I just ordered on Amazon, have not opened it yet, uh, it's supposed to monitor your temperature and send, and as long as it's connected to a Wi-Fi source, like your, like a hotspot that you might have, uh, or the campground Wi-Fi, probably better to have a hotspot, um, then it would be notifying you if the temperature exceeds or is below certain ranges. Um, and also on your, you can put an app on your phone and it will show you a graph of, uh, over time, of, of your temperature and humidity. Um, the other thing we considered was some people said it's better to have like an automatic generator starter that if the power fails, it will start your generator automatically uh, and that way um, the air conditioning will continue to run. And we considered that, but then we thought, well, what if it's winter time and the problem is the furnace goes out or the propane runs out? Uh, or what if you don't lose power to, your, to the campground itself, but maybe your um, air conditioner itself blows a circuit breaker on board. In that case, uh, that generator idea wouldn't work. Um, so I think it's better to have something like this that just notifies you when um, the temperature is above or below a certain extreme and you can then make your way back to the RV and uh, fix the issue. So let's take a look at this thing and see how easy it is to set up. I'm going to open it up. Wow, it's really small. This is the actual unit. Two AA batteries go there. Oh, that's the other thing. I looked at another temperature sensor that was a little bit cheaper. This one was $149. I looked at one that was $99. And what I didn't like about it was that you had to plug it in. Um, it didn't have a battery backup. so kind of defeats the purpose if you lose power. Uh, I also saw some negative reviews on that one that people were saying it was only updating like every several hours and I believe this one updates every few minutes. Uh, I'll, I'll post the um, exact um, specification in the description of this video uh, but it seemed like this might be, even though it's more expensive, this would be a better option for what we're trying to do. Okay, so look at that. Batteries are even included. Uh, now, here's the thing. I forgot to bring my glasses on this trip, so I have to use Lori's glasses, so please don't laugh. Uh, they do have beautiful uh, rhinestones, but I <laughs> so please comment if you, if you like this look, um, but I am going to need them to re read the instructions, so please forgive me. So, step number one. There's three steps. Step number one is install the batteries into your temp stick sensor. So we will do that. That looks easy enough. Looks like it even comes with some Velcro to stick it on the wall. Okay, so we'll put the batteries in. Comes with uh, Energizer Ultimate Lithium. So these are lithium batteries. They're expensive. Okay, that's step number one. Uh, the LED light should be blinking to indicate it's in setup mode. You can see it's blinking blue. Okay, now go to the Wi-Fi settings of your smartphone, tablet, or computer and connect to the Wi-Fi network named Sensor Setup. I'm going to use my laptop to set up the device, and I'm using my phone currently as a hotspot. Now, normally we have a tablet that we use as a hotspot, and we just leave it on, on running all the time, and that provides our Wi-Fi. So when we're out and about, uh, we would just leave that run. Um, but I don't have that with me today either. So I'm using my phone just to demonstrate this. 
Um, so I'm recording my screen. I will try to put that on the video as well. But the first step is you go to your uh, Wi-Fi setup and you connect to uh, sensor setup. You see it's an open network. Connect to that. <coughs> okay, so we are connected. Next step is to open your browser and go to just type in uh, the IP address 10 10 1 1. Oops. 10 10 1 1. Okay, look at that. This is very simple. So now we want to select our Wi Fi network. So I'm going to look here. I'm going to connect to my Verizon. I happen to use Verizon, and this will be our mobile hotspot. I'm going to connect to that. I'm going to connect, put in my Wi Fi password. So essentially now this temp stick is connecting to my phone hotspot, which is not our normal hotspot, this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, and so now the next step is, it says Wi-Fi setup is complete, now we need to assign the sensor to an ideal sciences account. So we need to create a new account. So I'm going to go to temperaturestick.com. We see right now that um, we are logged in. We have 88.8 uh, .8 degrees because I am sitting outside. Uh, and we have the time is 11.20 a.m. July the 22nd. So the time does not seem right. Probably have to set my time zone. So let me go back to our instructions here. So we got in here, we set everything up. Calibration and first time use. This is the next step. The sensor will calibrate during the first hour of use. Initial readings will be off by plus or minus 10 degrees until calibration is complete. The blue light will come on for a couple seconds each time the sensor takes a reading. And um, I think we're done. I think we just have to let it um, go through its startup cycle, calibration cycle. And you can see the uh, screen that I'm showing uh, will, will show me my current temperature and you can come in here and set up alerts um, for high and low temperatures. So I can create a new alert. I can say high temperature. So if the temperature is above, we'll say 80, then when I want this alert to go off always, and message, this is the message it will send, uh, temperature above 80. Um, select contact, create new. So I'm going to come in here and create a mic. So if it's above 80, it will email me and text me. And I'll do a test alert right now. And see how long it takes for it to come in. Simple. My alerts are set up, and now the next step will just be to mount this inside. Uh, I'm going to mount it right to the wall, and we'll go do that next. Okay, the final step was to download the um, app, and it's just called Temp Stick by Ideal Sciences. So I've already downloaded that, and I opened it, and you can see here the last check in uh, was the temperature 88.8 .8 and 56% humidity. But I noticed that my the time zone uh, at first was off by a couple of hours. And so the way you fix that is you go under account. And right here you can choose whether you want Fahrenheit or Celsius, and you can choose your time zone. So it was by default set to U.S. Mountain West, so I set it to U.S. Eastern, and then everything is working right. Um, so, pretty easy to set up. Uh, I can look at my alerts that I've already set up, and I can make changes to them if I want. And uh, looks like I forgot to save my low temperature alert, so I'll do that right now. So alert number two, we'll call low temperature. And trigger if temperature is below 55. And in that case, I want to select to notify Mike by email and text and say create alert. Okay.
So now if I go to my alerts, I should have two alerts, one for above 80 and one for below 55. <clears throat> you can also pause your alerts here or delete them. So if for some reason you don't want to be alerted uh, on that particular one because you know it's going to be above 80, for example, you can pause it. All right, and the last step is we just have to stick it on the wall. So they gave us a little Velcro. I've already put this one on the back here, so go ahead and put this one on here. And we will stick it right where we want it to go. Probably hold it for 30 seconds or something. And that's it. Super easy. We'll let you know how it works in uh, upcoming episodes if we're uh, able to use it properly and if there's any issues or problems. Thanks for watching.